All right, let's have a quick chat about a tool that you can use called Zapier. So I wanna do a quick review for you of Zapier. This is one of my favorite tools, and it's a really good tool for you to use for piecing together your app hack and actually getting an app hack to work, where you take different pieces of software and make them speak to each other. So if you need to connect anything together, this is a fundamental must know for you. So I'm gonna do a quick review of Zapier. So, the Zapier tool is something that allows you to automate just about anything. You connect different apps together or different pieces of software together and have them speak to one another when they don't necessarily speak to each other. So um, I want to show you an example of how it works. So the first thing that you are able to do is set up a trigger, right? So you set up the first app and what it does, right? So it might be that someone types in their name and email and hits submit, right? That's the trigger. So maybe let's say that you're connecting your survey to a calendar, right? You want every time someone fills out a form for you to send that data over to a calendar, just as an example, right? So you set up the survey as your trigger and the calendar invite as your action, and then it just runs on its own in your sleep. It's one of the best ways to put together your app hack. When I put together my first app hack, I heavily, heavily, heavily use Zapier to get things to speak to each other. So I want to show you what my screen looks like because this is what Zapier looks like. So what it does is it allows you to pick from a ton of different apps. Like look how many apps are in here. It's just like countless how many different options you have to connect different tools together. At some point, take some time and go look to see if the tools that you're gonna use for your app pack are available in Zapier. In fact, I make many decisions on whether or not I'm gonna use a tool for my app pack or not, based on whether or not it's compatible with Zapier because it changes everything for you. So what you do when you go to make a Zap to create your first thing where you're gonna string different things together, your different pieces of software, is you first select your trigger app. So it could be anything, it could be Gmail, it could be something else, it could be any app that you're using really as long as it's compatible. And you fill out all this information and then you figure out which app you're gonna connect it to. So you can see that this interface is pretty simple to use, right? Um, and this is going to be good for sending data to different places. If you're cobbling something together, all those tools need to speak to each other in some sort of way. So that's what Zapier is for. I just wanted to show you quickly how it works. So that's how it works. You set up your trigger, you connect it with an action, and then you run it in your sleep. And you can get kind of fancy with your triggers and actions as well. So I'm going to give this, when it comes to price, I would give Zapier a B. There is a free plan, there's a free basic plan, and there's also you can get a trial on some of the premium options. You have a limit though in terms of the number of zaps, I'll show you that in a minute, that you can do. They call them zaps, so every time that someone enters one uh, trigger and does the action, that's one zap, right? So you get a limited number of those, but it's really the best tool for connecting these things on the market. There are a few competitors, I'll talk to you about those in a second, but really I think it's the best first and glass solution. What hurts it, what gives it a B and not an A, for example, is that zap and task limit, right? So you end up having to go to, I believe the next plan is $20 a month if you need a lot. If you have a lot of signups, you have a lot of things going on in your app pack, or in your marketing solution, whatever you're using it for, because you can use it for many things, um, you get a limit on that. And so that kind of hurts it and its pricing. Also, um, it doesn't trigger every single minute. So every single time someone hits the button, it's not gonna actually do a trigger. What it's gonna do is every 15 minutes or every five minutes, it's gonna take all of the triggers that have been done and send them off. So it does them in batches as opposed to one at a time, which is what sort of hurts it. If you want it to do it faster, so not do it every 15 minutes, but do a batch every five minutes or less, you have to go up on one of those more expensive pricing plans. Um, so that's why it hurts it a little bit on the pricing and why it has to be. You can see actually here in full detail 
what all of the different plans are and the different options are. And you can see that, you know, for, for um, the free plan, you get three zaps, so you get to have three connections. I'm sorry, the task is how many times it actually runs. So you have three different zaps, three different things connected to each other. And a total, they can run 100 times a month with that free plan. Once you, you, you may at some point grow out of that plan and the prices will go up a little bit. Cool? So I just wanted to show you that view. Now, let's also talk about ease of use. How easy is Zapier to use? I give it an A minus. It's pretty good. You can get started in minutes and there are hundreds and hundreds of integrations, different tools that you can integrate. I showed you a little bit about what it looks like. It's pretty simple to set up. What hurts it though is that there's a limited library. Not every single tool is there. Um, and so it makes it a little bit more difficult to create your app pack in general, changes the ease of use of your app pack as a whole, because you might want to use a tool for your app pack that is not compatible with Zapier and you're going to have to find a way to get them to speak to each other a different way. Um, but it has a lot of integrations and I really even would look at what tools you want to use based on their compatibility with Zapier. Now, let's also talk about bells and whistles. I'm giving Zapier an A for bells and whistles. You can do all sorts of fancy things like multi-step zaps. So if you want to connect software A to software B and then the software C all at once. You can even do multiple step zaps. You can filter out certain zaps. So you can say, I only want this, the, this data to get sent over when the person's name starts with the letter A, right? You can put some sort of filter on your zap. And again, there's so many integrations. So A on bells and whistles, you can do a lot of stuff with Zapier. Competitors, um, we talked a little bit about other options. Um, there is one other major competitor, it's IFTTT, uh, which is if this, then that, right? So same kind of concept for the software where you connect something. If something happens on this software, then something happens on this software. You can connect things together. Um, you can see some examples of them down here. They call them applets on IFTTT. So when, um, open the garage, when your BMW enters the driveway, that is something that you can sync together, right? Um, automatically keep a, play a playlist with certain things on Spotify. So you can do these different sorts of connections. You can also make the same app talk to each other. Um, so it doesn't have to be one app to another app. And you can do that on Zapier as well. Um, but IFTTT is a good competitor to look at particularly if you don't find the integrations you need on Zapier, you can go see IF, if IFTTT has that. Cool, so overall, I'm giving Zapier an A minus. It's a really, really good tool to check out, and it's a strong one that's gonna help you piece together your app pack. All right, awesome, thanks for hanging out.